Hello, my name is Steve Good, and this is another video in the video series of creating scroll saw patterns with CorelDRAW. One of the topics that comes up quite often in the online forums uh, are people requesting information on how to create portrait patterns with CorelDRAW. They seem to be quite popular. Uh, you see them sold at uh, uh, art shows and craft shows all the time. So what I want to do today is show you the steps that I go through to create a portrait pattern. The first step in my process is to create, import the portrait of the person that I want to create a pattern for into CorelDRAW. I then double click on that portrait which will bring that portrait up in Corel Photo Paint. Now once I get that portrait into Photo Paint, the first step I do is I go to Image, Color Mode, Black and White. That will bring up the Convert to 1-Bit Requester dialog, and there is more than one way to, con to make this conversion, and the one that you need is Line Art. So go ahead and click on the Line Art, this will convert this portrait into a high contrast image that we can begin to make the pattern with. Now in this case I could address the threshold up and down to make the, the pattern easier to begin with, but I know that in this case I'm close enough. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And that has now converted that black and white that color image into a one bit black and white image. There's three tools that I use to begin to make this pattern look the way I want. I use the magnifying glass, I use the eraser tool, and I use the brush tool. The first step that I always take, and you can start anywhere on a portrait that you like, but I always scroll into a small section to begin working. Once I get there, I generally will start with the eraser and I begin erasing all these little floating islands. And you have to think of this as what we're trying to achieve is to have islands of white that we can cut and still hold the pattern together. So the first thing I do is to begin to move around and erase all the little extra bits. Now this takes a little time, but there's no easy way of doing it. Go ahead and scroll around. You might want to increase the size of your brush to begin with. I uh, might go in here, and again, I'm going to do a poor job, but I'll show you a better uh, demonstration of it here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and start creating islands of white. Once I've deleted uh, or erased as much as I think I need to, I'll go to the brush tool. Again, I might change the brush size depending on the area I'm working for from, and I'll begin to fill in these areas of black where I need them. I will continue working on the pattern in this method until I can achieve islands of white that can be cut out. Now what I mean by that is if you looked at, at uh, well let me just draw another example here. Let's say I take this eraser and I draw and you're thinking of this black as being the wood of your pattern. If I draw that right there we know we can cut that out of the pattern and we're good. Um, there are certain things I wouldn't be able to do. If I was to do this, and I tried to cut that out, this centerpiece is going to disappear. So you can't do that. You have to keep every bit of island, every bit of black ha or white has to be an island. So in this case, I could cut this out. So that's what you have to do throughout this whole pattern. Once I get that completely finished in the way I look, want it, I go ahead and save it and I bring it back into CorelDRAW as an image, again imported, and stretched out to the size I want. Now at this point, this portrait could be cut. You can notice that I have nothing but islands out here. I don't have any hangers on, and I've really spent a lot of time trying to make sure I didn't have any hang-ons that would fall out of the pattern. You could cut this pattern as is, you have to use a little discretion while you're cutting the pattern to decide um, you know, how much of this rough edges you want, you want to incorporate into your pattern. And um, I generally don't like to see that. So I, I will usually take this one more step. And the next step I take is I will import that image into Corel Trace. 
and I do that by simply right clicking on the image and selecting trace. Once I get this image into Corel Trace, I set it at 100% and choose the trace. And this gives me a little bit cleaner pattern. Um, I save that particular traced image and I go and import it back into Corel Draw. I'll go ahead and add any type of name that I want to add to it, either your own personal name or the name of the individual you're, you are sawing the pattern of. And at that point, I have a finished portrait, you know, that is ready to cut. One thing I will sometimes do is invert the portrait. Um, it dep just depends on preference, whether you like cutting white on black or black on white. In either case, in this case, you're going to cut out the black. In this case, you're going to cut out the white. It's the same thing. It just depends on how you like to look at it. When you're printing this pattern out, sometimes this will be easier on your printer to print than this because you have less black. Then simply affix the pattern to your wood blank, cut it out, and you have a nice scroll saw portrait ready to be framed, matted, and hung on your wall. Hope you've enjoyed this video and going to continue this series for several more videos. So check back on the blog often to uh, see what's new. Thanks a lot.